This video is brought to you by Bakaretsu. Hey guys, welcome back. So as you can probably tell from the title of this video, today we are going to be talking about some of the figures that I regret buying. So obviously from this channel you know that I've bought my fair share of figures. I have 165 according to my My Figure Collection account. And yes, there is definitely a few that I regret buying. So I chose to film this video now because I have just moved house. By the way, something which is really not fun for a figure collector. But anyway, so all my figures for the first time in a long time are all out in front of me on the garage floor. Um, and as I've been going through and picking out which figures get to come into the detolf and come into the room, I just look at some of the figures and I just realize that I just, you know, they, they kind of fill me with regret. They make me feel a bit blur when I look at them. Um, and so I was able to pick out a few of those today to show you guys. So I'm also going to try to see if there is a lesson learned from each of these figures today. Um, maybe there isn't, we'll see. Just before we start, a super quick preface to the video. Obviously how much someone likes a figure is a very subjective thing. And so if any of the figures I talk about today you love, Please don't feel like I'm coming after you or your taste. It's very subjective. I'm sure there's a bunch of figures I like that other people might think is overrated or trash or way too expensive, etc, etc. The first figure up is a pretty obvious one if you happen to watch the whole video this is from, but it is the 17th Astolfo figure by Amakuni. Um, obviously Astolfo from Fate. He is actually, you know, an Astolfo I prepared earlier. <laughs> uh, yeah, this figure is always the first one that I think of when, you know, I think of which figure I regret buying. The first source of regret here is that I'm not completely in love with the figure. For me, I didn't quite like his face and his eyes and it didn't really match what I wanted a Stolfo figure to look like. And the rest of the figure is pretty good, it's fine, um, but it's not like wow enough that I can justify his, his face here. And the more personal source of regret for this figure is probably a little bit more guilt related. And that's because I think I knew when I bought him that I probably shouldn't have bought him. First reason is while I do like a Stolfo, I think he's pretty cute, I'm not a huge Astolfo fan, and I probably shouldn't have bought the figure for that reason. And the reason I did end up buying him was that there was a person selling him for a pretty good price within like an hour of where I live, and I was like, oh, I could just go drive and pick him up, um, I should totally get him, right? And because of how locally accessible, I guess, the purchase was, I talked myself into getting him. So this is a figure that I won't be keeping, um, I won't be displaying him, I'll be looking to sell him. He'll be going into the to sell pile. I also feel okay about selling him because I'm getting the Jean and Astolfo racing figure, so I'm still gonna have an Astolfo in my room somewhere and I think he looks way cuter in that figure, so out you go. <laughs> I feel like the lesson learnt from this figure is because I live in Australia where the figure secondhand market is tiny that I used to have a tendency to over bias myself to purchasing the figures that were available nearby even if they're figures that I wouldn't have bought you know from Ami Ami pre-owned or something else. Fortunately I'm much better at this now I already learnt this lesson a while ago so I'm only going to buy figures locally if they're figures that I really want, you know, instead of just something I'm slightly interested in. Next up we have another scale figure. This is probably also going to be a pretty obvious one from a haul video. This is the 17th Kurusumakse um, scale figure by Wave Corporation. I kind of talked a lot of shit about this figure in the video where I unboxed her. And unfortunately, those negative feelings continue to linger on um, and I haven't like grown to love her anymore. I, I just don't like her enough to justify keeping her, frankly. I think the figure is actually overall pretty nice. The quality is nice, the base is pretty cool, pose is pretty cool. 
my biggest issue here is just I don't really like her face and her hair and that is just something that I can't get over. I wasn't in a rush to pick her up or display her. She would have just sat in the box in the garage the whole time. I think maybe the issues with her face and, and her fringe is only me, like it just didn't quite gel with me, so maybe other people will like her more, hopefully I can find someone to sell her to that will appreciate her more than I do. So my lesson and takeaway from this figure is to remember that it is very, very rare that you will like a figure more than what you see in the prototype, because the prototype is when the figure is at its best. It's literally made to market and sell the figure. Because I remember looking at her listing and the pictures and umming and ahhing about it for like three to four weeks about whether I should get her and because she just didn't look quite right in the pictures. Like if she looked good I would have just pre-ordered her and I should have listened more to this doubt um, but instead I was like oh maybe I'll like her better in real life. Um, and of course that didn't happen. I had the exact same criticisms of the figure that I did of the pictures I saw, so I should have known better. I think I did that because Kurisu is one of my all-time favorite anime characters, um, and I just really wanted to have a good Kurisu figure, like I didn't want to miss out. Um, so another thing I could have done is just looked at some of the older Kurisu figures to see if there's any of those I like more. And of course, I did mention in the video, I like the Good Smile Company one more, and so I actually do have that bought um, and coming to me on a boat. So we might see her sometime in the next one to three months, who knows. Okay, next up we have one that I don't think I've ever talked about on this channel, but that is the 1 8 painted scale figure of Jean d'Arc by freeing. So here is one I prepared earlier. <laughs> the reason I have some of these unboxed is because a few of these I wanted to unbox, put in my room, really look at them and think, do I regret it? And this one I answered yes. So this is a freeing Y style figure. So first of all, I guess, did you know that freeing did more than B styles? They do a, a series of Y style figures, which stands for Yukata style. So this is a pretty nice figure of Jeanne in a fairly pretty light blue Yukata. She comes with a white umbrella and looks pretty with her long braid, but overall I'm just not too impressed with the quality in this. It doesn't really stand up to some of the other 1 8 kimono figures. Okay, I know this is a yukata and those are kimono figures, but I'm gonna compare them anyway. The print isn't quite as detailed or exciting as some of the others, and I'm just not in love with her face. Like, it, it just looks a little bit off to me. So this figure only cost me 6,000 yen, so she wasn't a very expensive mistake here. Um, and the source of regret for me about this figure is more around I guess how I bought her and why. Because I remember at the time I had just maybe watched some people on YouTube and their amazing collections and I was hoping to get more into scales and I pretty much just wanted to buy any scale figure of any character I knew that was available for me to buy at the time. And so Jean stepped up to the plate, you know, I just got into Fate, I was like, I like Jean as a character, here's a figure, here's a scale, let's buy it, because then I can increase the number of figures that I own and start calling it a collection. And of course it's really exciting when you first start collecting to want to grow your collection, but I guess I do recommend avoiding this mindset of trying to do it very very quickly um, and with whatever figures you can kind of get your hands on because you might end up buying a few figures that you don't really want in the long run uh, that you probably just bought because you were getting into the figure collecting hype. So yeah, I regret little Jean here. Looking at her actually fills me with a lot of guilt. Um, so it doesn't even matter how good she looks, she just doesn't- Oh, and <laughs> she's upset with me. <laughs> Next figure I regret is a Nendoroid and I do collect Nendoroids, and when I was looking at all of the Nendoroid boxes in the garage, a lot of them I don't regret and I still love to own, um, but there was one that stood out that I just knew I didn't like as much as the rest, and that is 
the Breath of the Wild version of Link. And this is one where it's a bit of an enigma, like I'm a little bit confused myself, but I just know that I don't feel like I like this Nendoroid as much as I should like this Nendoroid. At first I was thinking, is it because it's a video game Nendoroid? Uh, but I have other video game Nendoroids like um, 2B or Professor Layton that I really like and I, I love that there's this like video game representation in my Nendoroid collection but there's just something about Link that I don't like and I feel bad admitting it. <laughs> I've had a good long look at the box and that Link in the pictures and I think what it is is that Link and the art style of the game, it's very soft and there's no hard edges. This Nendoroid doesn't really capture that same energy for me and so when I look at it, it doesn't remind me of Breath of the Wild. Maybe it's just me um, and it almost feels like it's Link from another Zelda game. I do feel bad, especially like he comes with like, he comes with like a little chicken thigh piece he can eat. Like, it's so cute. If anything, I find myself wanting the Toon Link Nendoroid more because I did grow up with a DS um, and so a lot of the games I played, he looked like that to me. So the one and only Nendoroid is this and I will be selling him as well. And for that one, the lesson that I've learned is that even if I really, really like the source material, so in this case, I really liked Breath of the Wild, I shouldn't use that to justify buying like the one Breath of the Wild Nendoroid they made. Because if I don't like that specific Nendoroid, it doesn't matter how much I liked the game, I'm still gonna find myself putting it in a Five Figures I Regret video a year later. All right, this next one is a bit of a controversial one um, and she's in the detox behind me so I'll just get her. All right so yes this next one is going to be surprising and it was surprising for me as well that I'm putting her in but it is the 1 7th Jean Alter dress version by Max Factory. Don't get me wrong this is a beautiful and stunning figure like the quality is superb her face is lovely her dress her legs her body sculpt is beautiful and her base it's like red velvet but i've come to realize that i just don't love her as much as i thought i would and i honestly think that for many many months i was kind of lying to myself about how much i liked her because of how much i wanted to like her if I'm not sounding like a crazy person right now. I think I got really caught up in this figure because I love Jean Alter. She's one of my favorite servants from FGO. And obviously I dropped a lot of money on this figure. So I feel like that's why for a few months I kept trying to lie to myself and be like, oh, you love it, you love it, you love Jean Alter and she was pricey. So you must love this figure a hundred percent. And I do like this figure, but I think I only love her about 40% um and I could kind of tell because I had unboxed a lot of my other fate figures that I was really excited to open up and I was just kind of putting off opening her up and what it is is that I just can't get over how much hair there is to this figure there's so much mass in the hair that it just makes the figure look really bulky and it also makes the figure like horizontally quite big so she ends up taking up a lot of space if they gave her a haircut like she kind of is in her first and second ascension um, and shrunk her base by half then i feel like i would love it but as it currently stands there's just too much hair and i just i don't like it <laughs> Honestly, when I started filming, I wasn't sure what I was going to say in regards to if I'm going to keep her or sell her. And I still don't really know what I'm going to do. <laughs> because I, while I like put her on blast and I said, oh, blah, 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 all these bad things about her, I still like the figure. I would say I love the figure. I just kind of love it 40%, not 100%. And probably not as much as I should relative to how much she cost me. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep her and display her but as soon as I run out of capacity um, and I've got figures that I like more than her that I want to display 
I will then probably sell her um, once I run out of room, basically. Hopefully I can sell her to someone who will appreciate this great big mane of hers more than, more than I do. Because she is stunning, um, beautiful. I think the lesson learned for me from this one is that I should watch out on buying into the hype uh, of figures that I'm not really initially that attracted to. Um, because I think a lot of the people in the community liked this figure and wanted this figure. And I was like, well, I love Jean Alter and I, I like figures, so I've got to buy the, you know, the best Jean Alter figure. Um, but really, I kind of should have listened to my own brain and what my own brain thought about it a little more. <laughs> All right, um, those are the, the five figures that I wanted to tell you about. Hopefully you guys enjoyed hearing about that and maybe were able to learn something from my past regrets. After all that talk about regret, I'm gonna go make myself a cup of tea now. After a long day of filming, sometimes I just want to lay back and stay comfy. And what better way to do that than to wear a high quality, super comfortable, subtle, and fashionable weave t-shirt made by Bakuretsu, who is also the sponsor of this video. Bakuretsu is a clothing brand that specializes in minimalist anime-inspired streetwear. They have so many amazing designs, including this adorable Nadeshko Uterocamp design. And the Shimarin design too! As a massive Uterocamp fan, I can really appreciate how these shirts manage to look super fashionable, appear subtle, yet still fully embody the vibe of the anime. They have many other designs up on their store, and there are always more on the way. The shirts are super high quality, fit great, and they're super comfortable. They use a premium blend of organic cotton and recycled polyester, making them feel smooth whilst also being eco-friendly. If you use the promo code DAIJOBUBU, you can get $3 off your first order of any shirt. Also, they ship internationally, even to the Australian Outback. Check out the link in the description below to browse their shirts and to also support the channel at the same time. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will catch you in the next one. See ya!